Back in the glory days of MS-DOS, the Oregon Trail was a dangerous place to bring your family of pixels. And back in the late 1800s, the real Oregon Trail wasn't a whole lot safer. It took between five and six months for settlers to cross the country on this rugged thoroughfare, which left a whole lot of opportunity for messed up stuff to happen along the way. Here are the most unsettling bits from the annals of Oregon Trail history. The Sager Orphans in early 1844, six children set off from Missouri with their parents Henry and Naomi Sager, who was pregnant and gave birth to a seventh child in the wagon on the way. That's when things started to go wrong. By the time they reached the Rockies, the children's father contracted an illness that proved fatal, and their mother passed away soon after, seemingly from grief. The kids wound up in the care of missionaries Marcus and Narcissa Whitman, who established a safe home in the Walla Walla Valley and adopted all seven Sager siblings. Unfortunately, three years later, a massacre took the lives of both the Whitmans and the two elder Sager children, John and Francisco. The others were taken captive, but only four survived the ordeal. Two of the girls ultimately authored memoirs as adults, choosing to focus on the kindness they experienced from fellow travelers on the Oregon Trail rather than the tragedy. The Donner Party you're probably familiar with the story of the Donner Party, the most famous or infamous travelers on the Oregon Trail. Only 48 of the party's original 87 members made it to the end of their journey, thanks to the fateful decision to use a dangerous shortcut called the Hastings Cutoff. It wasn't their fault, though. A scout riding ahead of the party noted that the route was too dangerous to travel and sent a warning back to the party at Fort Bridger, alerting them that they shouldn't risk it. Unfortunately, the letter ended up in the hands of Fort Bridger's greedy owner, Jim Bridger. Since steering people away from the cutoff would have cost him money, Bridger withheld the message, sealing the Donner party's grisly fate. Taking the Hastings cutoff caused a series of mishaps and delays, culminating in an early snowfall that left the party trapped in the Sierra Nevada for months on end. When their dwindling supplies ran out, the Donner party turned to cannibalism, eating the flesh of their deceased fellow travelers. But for one man, surviving that winter came at a lifelong price. Louis Kesseberg was among the survivors who made it out of the Sierra Nevada and settled in California. But once he was there, rumors started circulating that he'd been a little too enthusiastic about eating his friends, and that human was still his favorite type of meat. It got so bad that Kesselberg ultimately sued for slander in one, but he never escaped his grisly reputation. Before he passed away in 1895, he wrote, a man, before he judges me, should be placed in a similar situation. The Milk Sickness Back in the heyday of the Oregon Trail, the parties of migrating Americans included a fair few pregnant women or new mothers and their newborn babies, who often became orphans en route thanks to the trail's dismal survival rate. When that happened, the baby would typically be passed into the care of another nursing mother. But since medical knowledge was in short supply, these arrangements didn't always end well. In at least one case, the nursing mother feared that the baby might be carrying a contagious disease and opted to give her cow's milk instead of breastfeeding. Unfortunately, the cattle were grazing on plants like poison ivy and white snake root, creating lethal and bitter milk that poisoned the infant. We'll never know how many babies succumbed after drinking contaminated cow's milk, but since livestock on the trail were forced to forage on seriously overgrazed land, an enormous number of them would have been carrying deadly juice in those udders. John Grattan Starts a War Early contact between settlers and Native Americans was relatively peaceful, but as more people headed west, tensions began to simmer. And on August 19, 1854, one hot-headed idiot kicked off a war that would last 22 years. At that time, the influx of settlers on the land was straining the resources and the patience of the local Sioux, who started demanding tolls from travelers passing through on the Oregon Trail. The conflict culminated in the slaughter of a sick cow from a wagon train which had wandered into a Sioux camp full of starving people. But that wasn't the problem. The officer in charge planned to keep it peaceful and give restitution to all involved. Unfortunately, he chose the wrong man to negotiate. John Lawrence Grattan, a second lieutenant stationed at Fort Laramie, showed up to the the meeting with a bad attitude and a bunch of howitzers. And what happened next will not surprise you. Grattan didn't survive the skirmish, but the fallout from his dumb decision would continue on for more than two decades. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.